why her been on been five years now, so she's 20, but paralyzed. Can't walk, can't talk. She can smile and frown, and, and that's it. And um, I often ask myself, you know, why her? She did not deserve this. But it's nothing I can do to change that, but I use that energy to try to do that good and try to save other kids. And for me, it's mentorship. That's the key. And it's nobody's job to be a mentor. And half the time, the parents can't even help. That's why they're in the situation that they're in, the kids. You know, half the parents are either dead or in jail. So it's up to us to be mentors. It's not, it's not our responsibility, per se, but I feel like it's a moral obligation. If you know better, do better. And if you made it out a bad situation, then try, try to bring somebody with you. You know, try to bring somebody with you. This was the actual um, news footage. When stray bullets flew through the family van, one lodged inside 15-year-old Daniel Sampson's brain. Days later, she's still in critical condition, and now her older sister has a message for whoever pulled the trigger. You're driving, you're firing out the window. What do you think is going to happen? I think they're cowards. Beige Flesher says her parents have sat by her sister's hospital bed ever since the shooting. Investigators say the family van was caught in crossfire between two cars. Danielle's dad tried to swerve out of the way, but it was too late. The Apopka High School sophomore was already slumped over in the back seat. As she fights for her life, it's too much for her sister to bear. <laughs> Speaking to a crowd of friends and classmates, the family's message is one of hope. Hope that Danielle recovers, and hope that this senseless crime doesn't happen to someone else's child. It's a lesson even her young friends hope the shooters can learn. I just think they should stop what they were doing because it shows that it can happen to anyone. And I don't think they would want this to happen to their child or their sister. It's not fair. You're going to get caught. You told somebody, somebody saw, and you're going to get caught and get what you deserve. Thank God they did find a person who shot her and he spent it pretty much life in prison so that's one good thing that came out of the situation but I choose not to focus on the negative part the part that has passed what I can't do anything I choose to use my energy and my gifts to touch and inspire other people especially you and encourage them to make the right choice so I was so elated when I met Mr. Stephen <laughs> When I met Mr. Stephen Lee and heard about what he does in the community and what he does for schools and what he does for community organizations. And this is the first time I ever like supported a politician. I, I don't really vote. <laughs> I don't really follow politics, but I believe in Stephen. You know, so whatever party he is on, I am on. <laughs> because I, I trust his judgment. And that's why we are here. It's a long journey and it takes courage to, to step up and do something for the community, especially when it's coming out of your own pocket. You have to give up your, your jobs while you're working, while you're running for, for office. And, and, and it, it's a gamble. You may get it, you may not. But it's people like us that can change his faith, really. So I'm asking every one of you to support him because nobody can do it alone. So nobody can do it alone. So this is the first step. You guys coming on out, learning about Stephen. And you know, I'm just. Let me add, um, I'll add something to that uh, in regards to Stephen. You know, we met and Stephen called us one day. He said, um, I need you guys to meet me at MLK. Um, OK, what time? I need you guys to meet me at MLK at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> well, me and Stephen has developed a relationship since the first time I got there. <laughs> so, so Stephen, so Stephen said, "So you're driving this thing, but you still came to my event late." So we went to the meeting, and again I arrived late. Uh, so Stephen, you know, he, he he made sure I heard. He gave it to me, and and that day, what was so amazing to me is that he brought us to MLK and he took us into the school, and just his presence once he walked through the door, how everyone greeted him. When we walked down the corridors of the hallways, how the children reacted 
when they saw him. It was so amazing to me because, you know, normally when kids see authority figures and they're like, oh, I'm going to get out of the hallway. It was more of a matter of, Dr. Lee, how are you? How have you been? And they're so excited in regards to what he's done to, uh, for them. And they had no idea he was coming that day. You know, it wasn't anything that a matter of, okay, I'll stop by, so a few people I'm bringing. And it was just amazing to me just to see him walk around and the respect that uh, has been given. So the children was in line, but with respect. And when I saw someone who can actually give back that way, just by their presence. And, and, and we can speak all day and we can talk all day, but leadership is done when you act. When you act, the way you act is how individuals will lead their lives. So, you know, uh, I wanted to really get someone up here who can speak a little bit more on Stephen and, and some of the things that he's done. So, uh, Mr. Michael Murphy, I would love to have you come up and share with everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to say at the outset that uh, you know, I've, I've been to gatherings and uh, events but uh, I would have to say that uh, there's so many beautiful faces here, so many wonderful people. And I think it's uh, fitting for a gentleman like Stephen Lee, who considers this sort of opportunity a real blessing. And we appreciate the host and hostess for having this event. And my goodness, uh, one of the easiest things other than pleasure waking up in the morning just talking about this gentleman here. Uh, I was asked earlier you know, how long have I known him? And I can't say exactly. I know it's at least been a decade. Say 15 years. See, I was five off. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. There are many ways I can describe it, but I think I'll just touch on our relationships. And let me just say that I've never said no to him, and he's never say, said no to me. There are many, many, many stories I can tell, but the one that I will always remember was the situation a number of years ago when I got involved quite innocently. I just happened to stop by the uh, South Fulton Library, uh, the library off of Cascade. And it was a, I forget why I was there really, but it was a, somebody said there's a community meeting taking place in the, in the meeting room. And what it was, it was folks gathering from Southwest Hospital off of Fairburn. And the news was the hospital was closing. And you had nurses there who had been there for a number of years, who one day they came and said the hospital's closing and we need to try to save the hospital. Well, next thing I know, I'm appointed the PR person to save Southwest Hospital. <laughs> we started with community meetings, and one particular Saturday, we wanted to have a community rally. There are many reasons why the hospital failed, but nevertheless, we felt, and I know I personally felt, that every community, every vibrant community needs access to quality health. And Southwest Hospital, founded by the nuns, and I guess me being a Catholic, it meant something special. I needed a sound system for a Saturday rally. Who did I call? Stephen Lee. And the next thing I know, we were set up and we had a successful rally. The hospital ultimately closed, but at least the community had their say. When Stephen Lee decided to run for school board, only too, ha only too happy to help because I've always known where his heart is. The easiest answer that I, uh, easiest question I had when this race came up. He called me to ask me what I thought. What should he do? And I don't think I took very long to give you an answer. And he never even 
Well, yes, he did. I'm going to say he didn't even ask me to help, but yes, he did, but he knew that I was. I've been in politics for, in, in public arena for a long time. I cut my teeth in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I know what it's like to win, and I know what it's like to lose. But what I want to assure you this evening, that with your support and with your help, prayers, financial support, and spreading the word, this indeed will be the next commission for District 4. Earlier this evening, a gentleman came in and Stephen met him and complimented him on the beautiful tie they had on. And Stephen expressed his love for earth tones. He said, but the campaign, ca campaign game must be dressed up in a big tie. But I knew where his heart was. And so I had no problem in saying to the gentleman. I said, yes, yeah, Stephen likes earth tones. And the reason that he likes earth tones is because he's a down to earth candidate. I want to assure you that after attending service yesterday at his church, and after I was with the campaign manager, myself, and after getting the message from the pastor, she looked at us both in the eye and said, if he doesn't win, we're going to have, some, have something to say. <laughs> I don't know about you, and I maybe I'm not... I believe in faith. I certainly believe in the Almighty. But I don't, I, I get the message quick. So for me, November the 7th can't come quick enough. And I think Stephen will also attest to the fact that the only thing I asked of him is that at the victory party, and I thought about it when, before they turned the music down, I was here in the stream. And I said, Stephen, all I want at the victory party is for you to have the parts. Because that, that will be the election for me. But I could go on and on, but I'm going to tell you this, and then we'll get on with But believe me, you will never say, never say, never say that Stephen Lee that she did. And where we need your help is that the competitive race, whatever it's for, requires resources. And I'm telling you, I'm, where we've come with what we've had reminds me every day of the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. Because we've taken so little done so much. Okay? Now if you haven't seen it, hopefully you will see it. We've got a bus almost the size of the city of Atlanta. <laughs> when you look at it, you're expecting the door open and a thousand people to come out. It sort of reminded me when the first debate with Stephen Long, and one of the candidates kept saying, experience counts, experience counts, experience matters, minimizing Stephen's involvement in school board, he kept saying, experience counts. So I mentioned to Stephen at our subsequent meeting. I said, Stephen, if between now and there's a forum, if that comes up again and someone in says experience counts, remind them of something. Experience built the Titanic. <laughs> Amateurs built the ark. Okay? That's
So what I want to do now, before we bring on the man of the hour, is show you a living couple of the Stephen Lee campaign. And I want to tell you, and I, I, I would be really remiss if I didn't ask, you may think that because of the size of us that one of the prerequisites of being on Stephen's team is to be at least six feet tall and don't be pounds. <laughs> but uh, what can I say? I think he's comfortable being around tall timbers. But regardless, I'd like to have my campaign uh, comrades and uh, friends stand up and uh, take a bow to you. And, uh, seen him be incredibly involved in the lives of youth. I've seen him be incredi incredibly involved in the lives of the seniors. Uh, he loves the city. He loves Atlanta. He loves the youth of Atlanta. He totally values education. And he understands that we've got to bring everybody up. So I love him. He's a great man. So when you look at community and you look at what a Fulton County Commissioner should do, I think only Stephen Lee uh, in this race is most qualified. I'm Lisa Norton and I'm for Stephen Lee for Fulton County Commissioner. I'm Antavius Weems and I'm voting for Stephen Lee for Fulton County District 4. I'm Matt Westmoreland and I am for Stephen Lee for Fulton County Commission. I'm Sydney Robbins. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta. I'm a graduate of Morehouse College and I'm voting for Stephen Lee for Fulton County Commission District 4. You should too. <laughs> met a lot of you already uh, and I have just been amazed with just the, the 
people that I've met coming in. I know I've got some more that came in, and I'm, I want to be each and every one of you before you leave. But just with the people that I've spoken to and, and I've met thus far, this is just an amazing crowd of people. And we're not going to wait until after we win the election to start working. Because, see, I believe in this one thing. You don't need a title. You don't need a position to work. So with the connections that we have today, with the, with the, uh, just with the network that we're just building tonight, we can start working tomorrow. We don't have to wait till after November the 7th in order to start working because the need of the people doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I'm Fulton County Commissioner, Board of Education, or just private citizen. We still have work to do and we have to get started. It has been one of the most interesting journeys for the last three months of running for Fulton County Commission. Uh, I was telling somebody earlier today that I'm a very public, public person, but I'm a very private, private person. When I do my job, I don't have a problem with being in the public eye, but when I get done, I really want to just go home and I want to just fade, fade black. Uh, yeah, you can do some exhaling. I've, I've been exhaled in three months. <laughs> I've been exhaled in three months. It's, 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 it's sun up to sun down from wake up to go to bed with, with stuff you've got to do. And, and I tell you, there may be many of campaigns that may outspend me, but I can guarantee you there will be not one campaign that will outwork me. But I want to tell you why I'm running for Fulton County. Four years ago, I ran for the Board of Education because I felt as though that the, those students that was at risk and those students that was that the needed it the most didn't have a voice. There was things that they needed that there was nobody talking about. So, as as a director of a nonprofit organization, I was knocking on that door, and every time I knocked on that door, the door did not open. It wasn't it just didn't open. So. A lady told me, well, you know, if you want to change it, you have to be in the game. You can't be on the sideline. You have to be in the game. So don't wait until somebody else tells you what to do. Run for the Board of Education, and then you can be at the seat of the table, and then you can make it happen. I said, okay. So I ran, and I won. And in four years, I've personally sent 274 kids to college. <laughs> That would have been uh, an amazing feat if we were talking about those straight, straight A students, those 3.5 students. Mm -hmm. But these are kids that barely graduated high school. Mm -hmm. These are kids that because we cracked the door to the graduation room in high school, they snuck out of there and never looked back. They didn't, they didn't do very well on ACT, SAT, but they had a high want to. Mm -hmm. And I've always told them, it doesn't matter what you've done in your past, as long as you have a high desire of what you want to do in your future, I'm there for you. See, when you're dealing with young people, you have to give them hope. Because there's a lot of them that just don't have the hope. So you give them that hope and you will change their life. You give them that, that opportunity to succeed and they will strive very hard to reach that. So that's what I did for four years. So while doing this four-year term, I realized we've moved the educational system forward in Atlanta. We went from a 51% graduation rate four years ago to a 77% graduation rate in four years. I'm running for District 4. When we started this process, I realized that there was things that we're doing what we're supposed to do in the school system, but there were so many other extenuating circumstances that before they even got to the school, that was things just standing in the way. Community things. Things that they just didn't have. So, I talked to my circle of my, my, my associates, my, my confidants, and I said, we gotta do more. It's not enough. It's not enough for me to serve 
on the Board of Education. Now, mind you, I could have ran for re-election, and I would have been a safe candidate for re-election. I could have won. Matter of fact, there's a guy back in the back. That, uh, uh, name is Michael Hightower. I want everybody to turn around and look at that guy. <laughs> so, now, when you start talking about a political guru, I guess it's that, that Michael name. I guess that's it. Michael Hightower, Michael Murphy, you know. But, and the first thing that Michael told me was, I told him I was running, he was like, why would you give up a safe seat? You know, you... Really, why would you give up a safe seat for re-election? You could win this, you know, hands down. You've done great in the position that you've been in, so why would you give up a safe seat? And I say, like, because I can do more. So it's not about me being a politician. So, Beige, I want to tell you, you still haven't supported a politician, because I don't see myself as a politician. I'm a public service. I serve the people that need to be served. So when I told Michael, I said, you know, we're going to do this because there's things that we have to do. we got to work. And, and, I'm, and I'm a worker, and I believe in getting it done. So I made some phone calls, and if you guys look at my campaign team, you notice it's not the typical campaign team. It's young men because I believe in bringing them forward and putting them, putting them out front. I don't have a problem with young ladies. I love the young ladies and I love them to work too. But one of the problems that I've always had was we never gave young men an opportunity That's true. to step, to step up. That's right. We never brought them in and trained them so that when I sit down, because I'm not going to be 80 years old standing up here talking about y'all reelect me. I'm, that's not going to happen. But I want to be able to put some people in place that they can do these things. And the only way you, that they can learn how to do them is you bring them along and they do the work. So I'm grateful for them. I have four, five things that my campaign is based on. And they're real simple. How many of you have grandparents still alive? Yeah, some of you moms are uh, moms. You know, some of y'all are old as me. Moms are probably still, uh, grandmother, mother. In Fulton County, there's over 100,000 senior citizens every month that has to decide whether or not to pay their medicine bill or buy groceries. That's not acceptable. We have to fix that. We have $100 million in surplus sitting in our account. But we have seniors having to decide on food or medicine. Unacceptable. So our seniors, priority. Our youth, priority. You can no longer just allow young people to just raise themselves in this day and age. We have to give them structure. We have to give them support. We have to provide them with opportunity so that they can stop doing what they're doing to do something else. When you're smoking cigarettes and you want to quit, you don't just, well, most people don't just put the cigarette down and just cold turkey. You have to replace that cigarette smoking with something else. So if it's chewing gum or whatever it is, it's something else you have to replace it with. So if you want to get the kids off the street, you have to give them somewhere else to go. You have to give them something else to do. And I'm happy to tell you that tonight, I've already got some plans that we've already started, I'm, in my mind, I already started working. And so my new daughter, because her dad is named Stephen Lee as well, <laughs> we're gonna start, we, we're already working on some things. You know, because in order to get them off the street, you have to give them something else to do. So the second thing was our youth. The third thing is our economic development in our community. We have to be able to live, work, and play in our own community. We have to start taking care of our community so that we can bring the jobs, so we can live in the city that we have lived in and not be forced out because taxes have raised, been raised so high that we can't afford to pay our taxes. We need, we need to do better. 
We need to also make sure that our health care is top notch. We can no longer afford to keep worrying about whether Grady is going to be open or closed. We can't live without Grady in Fulton County. That's just fact. And we have to make sure it's stable. We have to make sure it's secure and make sure that the health care system in Fulton County is very viable. We have to make sure that our mental illness department is strong and robust. I've had the pleasure, not even the pleasure, the disappointment, to go sit in on courts. And I've done that because people just said, you need to go just sit in on these court cases and sit in on, on this day. And I go and sit in. And 90% of some of these, these court calendars is all dealing with homelessness, mental illness, and things of that nature. And then we're finding those people knowing that we, they can't pay the fines, and so then they're just being locked up. But they have nowhere else to go. Jail is not a place to get help for mental illness. And we have to do better. And the final thing that is on the top of my radar screen is that we have to do better by our veterans. We have to stop expecting our veterans to go across the seas and fight wars and then when they come home, they don't have the services that they need. So those are my five things. They're very robust, I know. But it's something that we can do and I know we can do it. And with the audience, our audience like this and a room full of people like you guys, there's nothing that we can't do if we put our mind to it. I believe that. So this is just the beginning. This is not get me elected and then y'all fall away to the wayside or whatever because I need you when I get in. We need to bring a new set of energy to Fools and County so that when it's time to do the work, we can get it done. See, right now, when people go get stuff to get done, they're looking at 70-year-old, 80-year-old people because those are the people that show up. Right now, everybody is focusing on senior citizens because when they need something done, they go to senior citizens. I love my seniors. And they'll tell you I love them, really do. But now it's time that we step up and we have to take our rightful place so that we can say, hey, okay, we still need you guys for advice. We still need you guys for counsel. But we're going to take our, we're going to take the lead now. And we're going to get this thing done. We're going to move this county forward. And I believe that's what it's, it's time for us to move this county forward. Fulton County Commissioner, District 6, Emma Darnell, she's been a county commissioner for 25 years. And very rarely does she endorse this anybody. She called me and she said, I want to make it perfectly clear that before this race is over, I want everybody to know who I'm supporting. So she said, I'm going to support you 100% because you have a record to run on. I don't talk about it. I'm in the streets. I have a hashtag. And it's stop talking and do something. S-T-A-D-S. -S. Stop talking and do something. It's all about what you do. It's not about what you say. It's about what you can get done. And it's not about me. It's about us together making it a better place for everybody. This Fulton County is the largest county in the state. We've got over a million people. <laughs> and I'm honored to be able to say that I'm running for an opportunity to sit at that position to be able to move that county forward so that when I look back four years from now, I want to be able to see all of you and others. I want to see that Fulton County Commission meeting a whole new life and vibrancy. So it's saying that we can do different things. I, I'm just in this room, it's so amazing just to see the kind of people that's just gathered in this room. So we're going to fight hard. We're going to fight hard to win this election, and we're going to fight hard to serve. And we're going to fight until there is no more breath left in our bodies. Because we, we believe, and I believe, that in order for Fulton to be successful, Fulton has to be about the people again. It can't be about politics. It has to be about the people. So I'm Stephen Lee, and I'm running for Fulton County Commission District 4. And I need your vote, I need your support, I need your prayers. 
Because in eight days, I want to be able to say that we have a new commissioner. And that commissioner's name is Stephen Lee. So thank y'all for coming out. Any questions you have for me, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. So any questions, any at all? No questions in this one? Tell me more. I have one. <laughs> you know, because you have this interest in <coughs> what are some of the programming you're thinking of and in, in, in using to make an impact on the youth that we're speaking about? Okay, here's, here's the thing about me. I'm saying that we have to do something with our youth. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you what I'm already doing. Okay. All right? Let me give you a story. Three years ago, there was this young man that got in trouble. He was he was 17. Well, three years ago I met him. He got in trouble at age 17. The judge sentenced him to prison at 17. The judge gave him 20 years at 17. That 17 year old had enough wherewithal to tell the judge that's too long for you to give me. I will never be able to recover after spending 20 years in prison. The judge went off the bench after she sentenced him and she came back to the bench and she reduced the sentencing to three years. He got out of jail at 20. When he got out of jail at 20, his family wanted nothing to do with him. He was homeless. A young black man in Atlanta just got out of prison and homeless. He entered the homeless shelter down, right down the street from the courthouse where he was sentenced. That program called Georgia Works brought him to one of my schools. And I, as a board member, was walking around thanking everybody for coming, and I met this young man. And I was like, you just don't look like you should be in a homeless shelter. At that point, he was 20. So I'm like, tell me your story. And he told me his story, and I said, you know, you got a high school diploma? He said, yes. I said, you need to be in college. Do you want to go to college? He said, I don't think you understand me, man. I just got out of prison. I'm homeless. I have nowhere to live. I said, I heard you. Do you want to go to college? And he's like, yeah. I said, okay. These are the four things you need. When can you get them ready? And he's like, you're serious. I said, very serious. So fast forward. Two years later, this young man graduates from college with a 3.75 GPA. Okay? Now, the success story would be great if we just stopped right there because he's, he's, he's fought the odds. He graduated with an AA degree, but he wants to be a nurse. Now, here you go. You've got a 17-year-old being sentenced to prison, went to prison, became homeless, living in a homeless shelter, now graduated from college, and now he wants to be a nurse. Well, guess where he is today? He's in nursing school. All because, not just me, but all because people didn't look at his past. People saw the potential that he had. So we want to make sure that these young people have opportunity. One thing. The second thing is we want to make sure that we collaborate with people People like Jennifer, people like, where is, um, Kathy. there she is, Kathy, people like Beige, people like um, Boston, <laughs> um, you know, people like Linwood and Jason, um, like a man here that I just met again tonight. Um, Bringing it all together, saying this this is what I want what I want to do first when I get in as a commissioner is I want to create four commissions. 
I don't know what they call it. And, uh, Rick's going to have to advise me on what we have to call that. But I want to start four things that I meet with every month. I want a youth council for, for the district that I meet with every month. I want a seniors council that I meet with every month. I want a small business council that I meet with every month. And I want a religious council that I meet with every month so that we can put this puzzle together and stack this thing up so we can do things. One thing I understand is there's a church on every corner and every door is closed except for on Sunday. And there's some big churches. There's, we got some of the best schools in this, in this state, in Atlanta Public Schools, and, 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 and they're closed except for when it's time for school. So when these kids need somewhere to go, we have to, we have to open these doors. We got to open these doors. Because if we don't open the doors, they're going to be in the streets. So it's not about me. It's I want to get in this position so I can open the door so that access can come. So that you can come with your dance troupe. So that you can come with the stunt, with the stunt class. So that you can come with, there's, there's a guy sitting back in the back and he is, he's doing phenomenal things. And I need some of my kids to be able to shadow him so they can understand that they can do the same thing. That's true. They're empty slates. So if you give them that opportunity, there's young ladies from Clark Atlanta sitting right over here. Well, I'm back. You know, and I don't want her to have to leave Atlanta to find a job when she graduates. I want her to know that in Fulton County, this Fulton County is big enough for everybody and we need to make sure that she has the right skills and that when she graduates, we need to make sure she's working and finding a good job. So that's what I'm proposing. But I can't do it by myself. I have to have you guys with me. And you know, I need deep pocket people like Michael Hightower back there. <laughs> All right, so any other questions? Yes, sir. What's your position on being able to uh, have an educational system for financials, such as uh, being able to learn more about um, credit? We're not taught that in school. We're not taught about investing, or we're not taught about what you do when you actually have money. So people tend to spend it, but then they forget about their taxes, and then realize, oh crap, I've got to do something. So they try to write it off, and all of a sudden, what that's financial literacy. Then the part. Turn around. Absolutely. That's my financial literacy guy. So programs are going to be, we're already working the programs. You are absolutely right. And, and one thing about that is there's 501c3 nonprofit organizations around this county that's just, there's a ton of them with all of the vision of all of the things that they want to do. But guess what? They don't have the resources. They got the mission statement. They got the vision. They got the plan. But we make it so difficult to get the funding to the people that really needs the funding that they don't touch the people that really need to be touched. We're gonna fix that. It don't take. It, it does not take a lot. It's an idea. I say we want. We want this to happen. Then let's make it happen. We need you on board so that you can help teach the class. You know, my grandfather told me all the time, every time I would bring him a problem, he said, so what you going to do about that problem? Don't bring me a problem if you haven't came up with a possible solution. So there's a lot of problems out here. And I can't solve them all by myself. But I need you to, when you bring me the problem, tell me what the possible solution is so we can work on that so we can, we can get it done. So it's a collaboration. So when we start collaborating, we can make it happen. But I think it's needed. I think it's needed. And, you know, we can't, you know, I won't, after December, I won't be in a position to mandate schools to do anything. But when we can do whatever we want to do after the school hours, and we can set up whatever program we want to set up. I have a 501c3 organization myself. We don't need to wait until after, after the election. We can rock and roll with it now. All we need is people to get on board to say this is what's needed and let's get it done. Can I ask you a question?
Well, guys, before we go into more questions, because Dr. Lee is here, and I want you guys to all get a chance to meet with him and talk to him, uh, what we're going to do, we want to thank Dr. Lee for actually being up here. So can we have a round of applause? <laughs> What I, what I want us all to do right now, um, you know, when you hear uh, and, and listen to just uh, the words that you speak, uh, you know, I always, uh, I, you know, I like to finish, I tell people, in anything that I do, you know, application leads to success. Success breeds wealth, and that's wealth in every avenue of your life, whether it be wealth of uh, knowledge, whether it be wealth of uh, finances, whether it be wealth of just moving forward and, and newfound uh, uh, growth. Uh, these are the things that you, uh, that when you apply yourself, these things happen. And one of the things you must always remember and understand that your past fuels your present, and your present dictates your future. So this is why we have such an amazing individual here standing before us today. So what I want to do right now, I'm going to have Kathy uh, hand out envelopes to all of you guys. Um, so you guys can go ahead and make a charitable donation. Um, for those who you can use cash or uh, checks, or if you cannot, you can use your phone. And you guys can go to, if you guys have a pen or on your phone, you can go to uh, votestephenlee.com. And you can use that on your phone right now, and she'll still give you an envelope. And what you'll do is, within that envelope, you can put your name and the amount that you wish to donate. And then what we'll do is, you know, after that process is all done, I would love it if you guys can actually, whoever hasn't have had the chance to meet Dr. Lee, please come up, ask your questions. There's a lot of things that he's doing. You know, I could have sat here and asked him a ton of questions so you guys could hear as well some of the things that he's doing, actually. So uh, as much as he had shared, there's so much more that he's actually doing, and that's what it's about. So you guys go ahead and... Um, you know, I, I really love the attendance. I'm glad that you guys are here, and let's enjoy each other and connect. All right? Can you tell everybody when voting day or where it is Voting is going on now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> voting is going on now. It's early voting is all this week. Uh, and election day is November the 7th. You know, uh, so early voting is going on right now, and, and um, Election day is actually November the seventh in Fulton County, so that's where that is. So, and and, and I, like I told somebody earlier that you don't have to live in Fulton to make a donation to the campaign. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Rick says Rick says that the maximum is twenty six hundred dollars, Michael. So yeah, right. I I want to add to what Dr. Lee just said. Whether you live in Fulton or not, for the most part, all of us, wherever we live in Georgia, we all come to Fulton. Because Fulton has some of the most amazing attractions in it. So the fact that we all come to Fulton and we all love being a part of Fulton, doing things in Fulton, then it only makes sense for us to keep Fulton. Does that make sense? Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right, there you go. All right, so uh, for all those who did not uh, sign their name and put their email address and their contact information, once we're all done with this, I would love it for you guys to do that on the sign-in sheet as well. Okay. And if somebody wants to write out a check, uh, elect Stephen Lee. Elect Stephen Lee. Make sure you put that elect Stephen Lee. We'll collect the envelopes in a minute. We want to thank you all for coming on out. You have a room full of people that you can network with. Some will become clients, some will become colleagues, but you never know unless you walk up to somebody and shake their hand and introduce yourself. So don't be scared. I don't think anybody in here going to bite you. <laughs> I've met some very interesting people tonight. I'm looking forward to meeting some more. But if I've met some very interesting people, if y'all haven't met the people that I've met, then there's some networking that needs to be done. Uh, so there's 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 media media specialists media <laughs> media companies uh, there's uh, uh, producers of uh, programs and, and shows and stuff back here uh, uh, there's dance there's dance troops right here. Um, real estate doing. there's real estate, there's, <laughs> there's there's financial financial advisors, financial literacy, there's um, 
there's, there's, there's Jennifer over here that does stunt classes, uh, you know, and all of those type of programs. And cast for movies and TV shows. Uh, and oh, I forgot, I forgot a buddy of uh, Vinny. There's Vinny that's got a foot in the, in the TV and a foot in IT, so it's an IT guy over here. Uh, barbers and stylists back over in some, somewhere back over yeah, back over here. Uh, you know, and and, and, and my y'all need to meet my uh, my man right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that was, those are those are kind of ties I like to wear those those earth tone ties and everything. So as soon as this campaign is over, I'm gonna get back to my earth tones. <laughs> but uh, and if you haven't met Michael Hightower, please make sure you meet him before you leave because it's a, it's not often that we get you know him out. So it's always good to see him. So. Thanks a lot. So once again, thanks for coming. I did bring some of my books because I write books. They're in the back. Some t-shirts and some mugs. Anything um, you guys buy tonight, half will be going to Mr. Lee. That's my little way in the back. So, yeah. 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 And if you didn't get a menu, wave down the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.